Welcome to David K. back here to the program on MMA Oddsbreaker, getting ready for uh, April 8th. Actually, he's fighting um, Cody Wilson um, and Legacy Fighting Champs. Is it 53, 54? 53. 53. 53. I know they, the Legacy, all of a sudden, since their Fight Pass deal, or excuse me, since their uh, Axis TV deal renewal, they got they started doing fights all the time. Now with Mutai, now with, it's like every time you turn yeah. around, there's another Legacy Fighting Championship going on, which is good um, because it keeps a lot of the guys busy. In the Texas area, because that's where they're based out of. Of course, you're in Atlanta, Georgia, um, and you've had a couple of fights for Legacy. They had a pretty good have, have a pretty good record coming through Legacy. Um, you have been very doing very well as of late. Earlier in your career, you weren't doing very well, but right. now it seems like you kind of came into your own. Kind of feel like you're, you know, a couple of times you had three losses in a row and a couple of losses in a row, but now you're on a pretty good win streak. Uh, if my math is correct, six fights in a row. Yes, sir. Okay, so what happened? Like all of a sudden, you went from so so maybe okay, you know, guy, good fighter, like to have him in there, exciting, like to bring him in, but not really a guy that's ever going to be in contention. To all of a sudden being like, wow, this guy, he's got something, he's legit. You know what what happened in the last say two years to make everything switch over? Well, I always I always enjoyed fighting. It was like a, you know, mostly a part time hobby, but I loved it. And then uh, when I got the opportunity to fight for Bellator. I went there and was just super motivated, like seeing all the guys there and the, the posters of the guys up on the wall and like it just inspired me and made me want to come back and train harder. And ever since then, which was in like 2013, that's pretty much what's inspired me to to go hard and go after it. And I'm dedicated. I eat right. I'm, you know, I'm making my weight classes now instead of fighting at 85 and fighting at 70. Just a lot of a lot of things are in my court now. When you were fighting 85, you obviously didn't worry about your diet because it was easy for you to make weight. How right. hard was it for you to get dialed in to make 70? Like, so knows what that's 15 pounds doesn't sound like much to the normal person, but to a fighter, 15 pounds is a lot of weight when you're already a, a pretty high revving machine, and now I'm having to cut that off in fat and maintain the muscle mass to continue. Yeah, well, um, I would say I'm a little bit insane. I, you know, I'm motivated when I'm going to make weight. I I run a lot. I don't just um, I don't just diet. I eat a lot cleaner. I don't drink alcohol. Um, I cut some things out of my diet, but um, it's a sacrifice and it's it's discipline. You know, I personal train other people too, and I I try to I dare them to make to lose weight with me. They don't have to lose as much as me, but they have the hardest time doing it. Even losing like five pounds, they have the hardest time, and I lose like twenty five pounds. Well, let, let's admit it though. Like you're, you're going to practice twice a day. You know, you're hitting it hard. You have a high intensity workout. You know, three hours a day. Most folks they have eight, nine to five jobs. They're not gonna be able to lose as much weight as you because you got they have other things going on. But I do understand your point. Like there, you lose 25 pounds. It should be relatively easy for someone to pull off a five pound loss or a three pound loss during that same six week period. Like if you figure if someone's really dieting hard, three pounds a week is not impossible. A pound and a half is is pretty good. And they should be able to maintain that. So you're right. It does take a lot of discipline. There, there is no magic pill. There is no magic supplement you can take. You know, I don't care what, what you get in your email box. Like, there's nothing that works but time and dedication and, and really kind of being, you know, obsessed with, I got to make weight. I got to lose weight. Um, do some of your clients, do you, have you lost a couple of clients because you are so obsessed with like, hey, I can lose 25 pounds. You should be able to pull off five pounds. Uh, yes and no, but not for that reason. Just because of my, you know, I guess what I expect sometimes out of people is more than what they're willing to do. But, um, nonetheless, uh, you know, making weight is easier for me now because I, I'm more disciplined. Um, like when I don't have a fight coming up, I'll drink beer on the weekends. I'll go and have tacos and things like that. I just, I stick to a strict regimen, you know, six weeks out and then, by over time, each week, I just see myself getting leaner and leaner and leaner and leaner, you know. So I still got about 15 pounds to go, but I still have a week and a half. So, How much will you right cut, cut the day of weighing? When you wake up in the morning, like how much you have to take off that day? Honestly, roughly about 10 pounds. Okay. So you're a 10-pound guy, and obviously it's all water. That, that's normal. Um, yeah. Some guys will last. Like I, I, you know, I know a lot of guys like to keep it around five or six pounds waking up. Um, and I know some guys that make weight before they go to bed the night before and just hold it until, until weigh-in time. And that's just kind of how they do it. It just depends. Everyone's got their own little different formula. Exactly. Um, yeah. it, it seems to be working for you. I mean, obviously, however you're doing it, it's working for you, and that's, that's all that counts. Let's talk about Cody Wilson, though. 
how do you see him as an opponent coming into this fight? Uh, <clears throat> I see him as a very dangerous opponent, and I actually asked for him. Um, I knew that he was on a like a nine or ten fight win streak. I'm not exactly sure. I heard he fought Jeremy Holloway recently, but I I can't find that on I can't find it on Sure Dog or anything like that. Uh, and I heard he won, but I don't I don't know if that's true or not. Um, anyways, I just want him. Oh, you asked me last time. You you said I was an older guy, and you know what I plan on doing with this. And I just wanted to take it as far as I can. Uh, you know, I have a couple of years left. You know, I'm not exactly sure. Um, you're you're only what 43 or 44? How old were you when you retired? 39. See, I think I got a late start. I I didn't start doing this, you know, until I was like 21 or 22, and then I took a break for a while. I didn't, you know, and then got back to it. And I I'm just very passionate about it. I love it. I took a um, I was doing high level you know, hard contact sports. I was wrestling all the way through college and, and all that. So like I was banging my head against other people's heads all the time. And that, you know, and then for me, I got out of the way because it's financial. Like I can make more money doing stunt work and acting work um, and interviews than I can actually fighting. I was just where I was in the level of at, at the time that I was getting rated, like, should I get away or should I not get away? I was like, I was starting to slide down the hill. It was just athletic ability fades. It's just how it goes. And did you feel like, I can't do this. I can't keep no. doing these guys anymore. I absolutely felt I could keep doing it. I actually absolutely felt I could keep doing it. So I was about 41 or 42. I felt like I could be 100% go out there and battle the top end guys, but I wasn't getting paid top end money. So for me, it was a financial decision. I got out before my athletic career was actually over because financially I could do other things and make more money. It didn't make any sense when you keep getting punched in the face, you know, and taking that, taking that risk for no retirement plan, for no health care plan. There was no, uh, um, um, health insurance at the time in the big leagues, it was nothing. It was just, you know, good luck and, and hopefully you make it to your next fight. Uh, but for you, you're in a different little situation. Like you have, you do have a passion for it. You really are super highly motivated and dedicated right now to the sport. And it shows in your fights how much you increase your, your tactics and your technical ability every fight. Um, is it tough sometimes? Do your coaches have to like pull you back and tell you to go home? Uh, not particularly. Um, I, I cross train a lot, so um, you know I'll I'll go somewhere else, or sometimes people come to my gym um, to cross train. Ooh, I just got a cramp. Um, and I do some things that people don't see me doing. You know what I mean? Like I'll go off on runs, and so no one really. I'm not that guy. Like I'm not. I'm not the guy in the gym that's like. I'm not necessarily the first one there and the last one to leave. When I'm when I'm done, I'm done. I usually train about forty five minutes to an hour at the most. Now, and then I stop, you know, because after that, it just seems like you you can get hurt or something like that, you know. I'm a lot wiser with my training now. Like even a, a lot of the guys that we train with, um, we're not beating the shit out of each other's heads. You know what I mean? We're uh, moving around more, finding our range. Sometimes we'll spar with the little gloves. Sometimes we'll spar with the big gloves. In order, it's different range and different blocks, you know, with the gloves compared to the boxing gloves. So, so we do a lot, a lot more of that stuff nowadays, and and we do hard grappling and hard wrestling. But I never wrestled in college or anything like that. So, you know, I wouldn't say I'm the best wrestler, but I can hold my own with all the most of the wrestlers. Well. Uh, one of our top wrestlers is Mike Graves. He fights in the UFC. Um, he was on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, Chaz Walton trains with us. He's fighting in Legacy 2. Uh, he's fighting also with me. Uh, Devorius Tubbs, he's also fighting. Uh, so we got a nice network of guys that like all consistently train. Another guy, Warren Thompson, who's a, you know, a, a, what is that called? Not Legacy, but what's the other one? Kickboxing. Yeah, Glory. He fights. He fights for Glory. Um, so we we train with some of the top guys. Like they're all getting ready for fights too. So we're all using each other's energy, and you know it's really nice. Atlanta's a really good fight scene. It's uh, this fight's on April eighth. How many more fights this year do you want? Best case scenario, no injuries, can walk right in. Like how many times do you want to fight in a year? Honestly, about every other month, I would love to. Okay. And then, but with, but with legacy, you keep going the way you're going. The UFC pays close attention to legacy. They pay attention to other leagues as well, but they pay really close attention to, to legacy with Mick. And, and 
it could be, you know, it could be all of a sudden you get a phone call to move up, you know, to the to the bigs. Are you ready for that phone call to happen if it does happen? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not just money, though, because remember, they don't, there's no easy fights. If you're in the UFC, right. everyone's tough. There is no easy fight. Everybody's coming for the Wolves. Everyone's looking to be the next champ. Everyone's trying to make their mark. Everyone's trying to get that next Toyota paycheck, that next Harley Davidson paycheck. So right. when you walk in there, it's like you got to be ready to, ready to play right away. Otherwise, get out of the way. Like, don't even bother going up because they will – they throw you right to the wolf. And even with right. that being said, you're still ready to go. You're still ready to make the jump. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, Dave. See, that, that's why I asked for Cord- Cody Wilson. He's on a nine or nine-fight win streak. I know that his manager is Monty Cox. You know, his, his next step is, you know, Bellator UFC. I'm going to beat the shit out of him. And then, um, you know – wait to hear from them or I, I don't know what I got to do to um, get their attention because I guess my records kind of messed up from before. Who's your manager? Oh, uh, CJ Wilson. Then CJ, they'll get a hold of CJ or CJ, get a hold of them and just start putting the feelings yeah. out. And it'll, it'll just, it happens organically. A lot of times, like all of a sudden there's a need, there's an injury, there's a needed at the weight class that you fight at. And then they give you a call and all of a sudden you're coming every place. Yeah. I don't want to look past Cody Wilson because he's a tough guy. He's got great stand up. I honestly don't think he's ever fought anyone like 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 myself. He, he's his record. Some of his guys are like I don't know, zero and one. I saw maybe like you know three and three or something like that. He's never really fought really any big names or really tough guys. So I think I'm going to be more than he can handle. You know what I mean? Especially in the second and third round. Yeah, for sure, because you do have great cardio. We have shown it. You know, the other legacy fights, and it's been really good. So, do you get to watch the fights? Or? Um, I get them late. I don't, I don't get them live, uh, but I get them later. But, yeah, you look good in your last couple of fights. You really have. So, And your cardio level is getting back. Like I said your, it's your ability, your, your understanding of what to do at certain particular times is much better as well. Before, it's kind of like yes. I'm punching. Okay, should I shoot? Should I not shoot? Like, I'm not sure. So it would be like a hiccup. And, like, obviously, you're, and there's a hiccup. And you're like, well, what am I doing? Like, I'm not really sure, certain of myself. And now you seem more certain of yourself. You're like, okay, this is what I'm doing. And you throw whatever your punch combination is, and you step in. If the takedown doesn't work, you back out. You start throwing again, and you shoot again. And if it works, you're on top, and you ground and pound. And that's, and that's Thank just, you, because I've really been trying to work on that. that that's just kind of – it shows. It shows in your fights. That really shows in your fights that you're getting rid of your hitches. And there, there's like everyone's got hitches. Everyone's got tells, but you're getting rid of that hitch that you have. I'm going to give you a, guys a hint. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably beat the hell out of him from the clinch because he's taller than me. I don't even know why I'm giving this away, but I'm just – Get to this, this one here until one or two days before the fight, and not enough time for him to adjust. Okay, well, I'm going to smother him. Basically, I'm going to be throwing pu- so many punches and shooting and going for the takedown, fighting him in the clinch. It's going to be an ugly hockey fight. He's not going to be able to stand my pressure. I'm going to probably pick him up and slam him a few times. And you know, the last time the guy's rib broke. I mean, I didn't. I don't know what goes on during these fights because it just happens, but. Um, that's kind of what's going to happen to this guy, you know? I like it. I like it, Dave. Dave, uh, thanks so much for coming on. He's getting ready to fight. Cody Wilson, Legacy Fighting Championship uh, 53 um, on April 8th. Take a look at it. It's a great fight, and uh, and hopefully that phone call comes pretty soon after this next one. Thanks a lot, Frank. You got it, but we'll talk again soon. See ya.